corn, broadleaf herbicides. We've got a lot of choices now, Darren, and now that Roundup is having more problem controlling every weed out there, a lot of farmers are looking at throwing something in for a tank mix partner. We're going to talk about that today. Well, I loved what you said there, Brian, about we have a lot of choices. Yep. And this is the big thing. Everybody gets so scared. Oh, no, we've got mare's tail that Roundup's not controlling, or we've got some pigweeds that it's not controlling. You know, that is a big deal, but by the same token, there are plenty of other broadleaf herbicides in yeah, corn. Right. You can wipe out any of these weeds. Right, yeah, broadleaves in corn really don't scare me much, and, and here's the reason why. We've got status that has a very broad spectrum. In fact, what I always say, there would be guys that would walk into my office and say, yeah, uh, I got a weed problem. I'd say, well, which weeds do you have? And they'd say, all of them. Well, then my response is, you need to use status. Okay, if you know what weeds you have, we've got other products like Callisto, Laudus, and Impact. They're almost as broad spectrum as status, and you can spray them a little later than what we would normally like to spray status. So you can go either way with that thing, but the point is, we've got broadleaf killers that will control any broadleaf weed in corn. We don't even need Roundup. Okay, now status has a little bit of dicamba in it, Brian. Yep. And you know, down the road Just here a in a few Not years, much. in a few years, we're going to have dicamba tolerant corn and soybeans, or so they say. It's in uh, in development right now. Yeah, the product but we don't right now. No, the products look interesting, but right now. You know, if we spray status late in corn, we're probably going to have some drift issues here. Exactly. And, and for that reason, a lot of guys are using some different products. Well, that, or they're also using turbo T-Jet nozzles or air induction nozzles. So air induction nozzles is what BSF is talking to farmers about. If they just use the air induction nozzles, BSF will say, then the drift problem almost completely goes away. And for the most part, I would agree with that. There is a lot less drift when you use the right spray nozzle. Well, with all of these products, they're going to move through the plant somewhat. Like with status, for example, if you get some on the plant, you're going to kill the plant. It's going to move through the plant. You're going to have a little bit of soil residual activity too. So you don't have to do like a perfect job with status, you know, getting tiny little droplets on every single leaf. Okay, when we start taking a look at which product are you going to use when, I'll just say this. We think that status is a little bit better on Canada thistle, it's a little bit better on wild buckwheat, maybe quite a bit better on wild buckwheat. But as far as just about every other weed goes, I'm not too worried whether you want to use the family of Callisto, Laudis, or Impact, or status, either way. But the thing that we do want to talk about a little more is what rate are you going to use? And my opinion is if you just use a low rate of any of those products along with Roundup, you're going to have good success. And surprisingly, Darren disagrees with me. Well. You know, here's the thing, Brian. I, I think there's a lot of confusion in the market because, frankly, a whole generation of farmers has grown up just using Roundup, and that's yep. it. So when we look at all these other products, yeah, you say status, and I talk to a lot of younger farmers, and they say, well, two and a half ounces, that's the Roundup Ready rate that goes on Roundup Ready corn. Well, hold on. That's if 22 ounces of Roundup is being tank mixed with it, and that 22 ounces of Roundup kills everything. The two and a half ounces of status is just a little bit of help. Now, if you want that status to do the whole job, you have to use a stronger rate. Well, Darren, it sounds like uh, just behind us, somebody wants to get out there and spray that status right now. And one of the things that we often talk to farmers about is spraying any of these weeds early in the season. Okay, with Roundup, there were times where farmers would let weeds get two to three feet tall, not inches, two to three feet tall, and they still have pretty good control. You can't do that with any of these broadleaf killers. We want to kill them when they're in the range of two to four inches tall, not just so we get the best weed control, but also so we get the best yield, because that's what really matters. Well, I think getting back to the rate discussion just a little bit, Brent, I think really you have to look at things a little bit different on your farm. If you've got Roundup resistant or tolerant weeds, you know, forget about Roundup being your primary broadleaf killer in corn. There are plenty of very good products you can use a full rate of status, a full rate of a Callisto, Lotus, Impact, even Buctral Atrazine. I mean, there are a lot of different products out there you can choose from that would be pretty safe to your crop and deadly to those weeds. And then you look at the Roundup as being a helper product. Instead, you know, just flip the tables a little bit and say, okay, well, now that I'm going to control just about everything with whatever product I'm using for broadleaf status or Lotus, Callisto, whatever, now how much Roundup can I put in there to help with something else? Like sand burrs and woolly cup grass and those kind of things that the broadleaf killers are not going to control. Mix some of that product in, like Roundup, for example, is less than three bucks for a quart. Why wouldn't you just use a quart of Roundup with it, too? Yeah, and by quart, we're talking quart of four-pound Roundup, 22 ounces of six-pound Roundup. Now, one last thing that I wanted to point out was status, Callisto, Laudus, Impact, any of those, they do require the addition of more non-ionic surfactant in that tank. In fact, if you wanted to have even better success, depending on the product, you might need 
need to use some crop oil or methylated seed oil, just talk to your agronomist about that. But the point is you're going to need more than just ammonium sulfate to make those products work really well. Don't get too worried about it. It only costs a few cents an acre. It's no big deal. But we just want to make sure you get the most bang for your buck out of that product. And, you know, the other thing, Brian, is a lot of guys are saying, oh, man, that means I'm going to have to spend a few more dollars on my broadleaf control this year. Ooh, yeah. Wow. You know, <laughs> with the price of corn right now, for another half a bushel of corn, you well, can do a fantastic job. Yeah, so, so don't get us wrong. I mean, we, we, we kind of laugh about this stuff now, but it's only because corn has a tremendous price to it. We're getting fantastic yields now. And, you know, everybody is thinking about, oh, fungicide and insecticide and BT and all these other things. And we lose focus on, hey, weeds are probably the worst problem that we've got on every farm in the country. Make sure you get great weed control. And if Roundup isn't quite doing it, throw in a tank mix partner like Status, Callisto, Loudest Impact, or even Buck Troll, and there are a few others as well. Well, you know, we talked about broadleaf weed control and corn, but does that have anything to do with our Weed of the Week? We'll show you what will control this weed later in the show.